Hi, I'm Steve Byrne, and this is the Liberace. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is what I call the Clay Aiken. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. And this is the vagina shot. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> I'm Joy Bryant, and this is Across the Board. I am downtown LA, and I'm about to meet comedian extraordinaire and star of Sullivan Song, Steve Byrne. This is an Oprah interview. <laughs> we gotta turn it up. We're gonna play some ping pong, drink some drinks, and have some fun. Balls of Fury! It is on. How are you? I heard you talking some serious shit. Yeah, I talk shit. Yeah. It's my show. I can talk I'm gonna turn shit. that frown oh, upside down, down oh, you... and then back again to a smile. Oh, really? we're gonna have fun today, yeah. Okay. So okay. I'll do three I don't even know what that means. Is that possible? Let's get our bucket of balls. She said that, not me. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys want to smack some balls? Yes, I'd love I'd like to, to smack, smack some balls. balls. Well, we could paddle some balls. We could smack some balls. Uh, do you have any black balls? I don't know if that's your... Black I like kind of light skin balls. I don't. Light skin balls? Do you have any yellow balls? I don't have yellow balls No? Because they're the mini ones. Oh, no. I said but that. But I like I'm black Korean. paddles. You like black paddles? I like paddles? a black paddle. Is that code for something on the streets? So you're okay with white balls then? We'll, we'll go with the white balls. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with the white balls. Here we go. Are you ready? I'm about to set your ass on Here fire. We go. That's fine. But we could just say you won. I haven't done this since eighth grade, so maybe after we play ping pong, we can go sniff glue in the woods nice. and ride our bikes to the candy store. Okay, ready? Yeah. Is it okay if I start serving or? Sure, ladies first. Okay. Did you uh, play any drinking games in college? Uh, yeah, it was called. <laughs> It's called Beer Night, where you go down to this basement in Kent State in Ohio, where I went to school, uh -huh. and it was two fifty, and it was a bucket of beer, and it, it tasted like sweat socks and wet pennies. It was disgusting. <laughs> but we were getting plowed, and we were 19, so it was awesome. But in, in college, though, you could drink like a pony keg, and you recover like Wolverine the next day. Yeah. You just heal up super quick. Now, when you're old? Yeah, that's, that's like... Takes a couple... How old are you now? That's a, that's a rude question. We're the same age. We are? Yeah. You're July? July, yeah. October. So once you hit 30s, your body becomes like an asteroid coming back into the atmosphere. 35. Things just start falling apart. 35 was the year. Yep. Just shredding. Oh, God. We're both like year to tiger. Deal with it. Deal with it. Oh! 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 Rah! Who's right, Asian? I, I go again, right? Who's Asian? Ah! If I could light my paddle on fire after that, I would. <laughs> just right in front of you. <laughs> like a ding-dong ditch with the bag and the poop in it. No! I just light it on fire. You want a drink? Do I want a drink? Yeah. Sure. What kind? What are you drinking? Uh, free. That's my favorite kind of drink. <laughs> so, whatever's on tap. Strong right free. Strong hard free. Hard free. Light free. Pink free. Pink free? Yeah, okay. anything pink free. Okay. I'll do. Okay. Beer? Can we have a couple of uh, domestic light beers? And make it snappy! <laughs> All right. There you are. Thank you. Sure. And these are, as you said, a domestic light beer. The service here is impeccable. Wait, so when you, you went to Kent State, right? Yes. What did you, uh, you were a theater major? We don't have to bring that up. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> Look, I was a theater major at Kent State. I, I was never cast in one play. If that gives you any indication of how awesome of an actor I was in well, college. What made you become a theater major then? Uh, you know, I just thought it'd be fun. Right on. So that's why I did it. But I had no idea how I'd end up in stand-up, but... Isn't it? It's not so far-fetched, though. But Yeah, well, I was never... A, I never went to a stand-up show ever in my life. Until you until, until I worked at a comedy club in New York City after college. How so, did you end up in New York City working at a comedy club? I asked to move there after college to just experience New York for... A little bit. <laughs> I walked up and down Broadway, got a job at Caroline's Comedy Club. Mm -hmm. I saw Margaret Cho, Dave Chappelle, everybody on SNL. Before they were stars. Before they were stars, mm -hmm. yeah, this is 15 years ago. Serve it, man. Serve for volley. Okay. Oh my God. Well, you are <laughs> making me sweat up an absolute oh. storm. Ha! Ah. Uh oh. 
The shirt's coming off? What? Uh oh, I'm scared. I'm so now I'm scared. Ready. I'm so scared. Now I'm ready. Was that out or? No. Were you distracted? Yeah, I, I don't even know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, I have the body on. of a 12 year old Vietnamese Filipino <laughs> figure skater with a beer gun. Yes. That's what you're looking at right now. Don't say that. All right. So I think it is my gut. Oh, and uh, ready? Yeah. So, uh, what were you doing? What was your job at Caroline's? Oh, Caroline's? I was, uh, I was answering phones, sweeping floors, mm -hmm. and watching a bunch of great comics like uh, Greg Giraldo, Colin Quinn, Bill Burr, Robert Kelly, um, Jim Norton was one of my favorites, uh, Patrice O'Neill. Dang. Uh, and then I just worked up enough nerve to, to try to do it myself. And it took like four months and I went up and told some horrible jokes, but I, I had fun and I just thought that's what I'm gonna do the rest of my life. Wait, 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 you, it took you, wait, for when you started working there, it took four months later? Yeah, that four months and I was like, okay, now I worked up enough nerve to, oh, wow. to wanna try this. So then I went up to this club called Stand Up New York and performed and I actually like teared up afterwards. I was like, I, I ran outside. I was like, that's what I'm gonna do the rest of my life. Right on. I never make another dime, which I really haven't, so. <laughs> you wanna do a toast to that? Okay, sure. Bottoms up. You know, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play and maintain eye contact with you the whole time and not really? even look at the ball. Is that a challenge? Yeah, it's like blinking, a blinking contest, but you gotta play and not look at. Oh. All right. right, well, how about, how about a little it. challenge? Whoever screws up the point has to drink. Sure. Yeah, I haven't broken eye contact with I've you I've noticed yet. that. You see that? You're looking at me like we've been dating for a year and I didn't call you last night at three in the morning. Right. Yeah. Because. Where have you been? What, what, what? Right. Okay. Right, you ready? All right, yeah. All right. Let's do this. Oh! Okay. Drink, motherfucker, drink. That wasn't given. Drink, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I have to ask you a real question now. Hockey. Oh, hockey, yeah. Yeah. I played hockey, and when I went to Yale. Wait, you never played hockey before? No, I rollerbladed before. I sat at the bench the whole time, but I made the team. And no, then- that's, that's awesome though. I could skate. Right, were you scared as a black female to be playing ice hockey? No, I think people were scared that I was a black female playing hockey. See, I would think it'd be the other way, because if you're black playing on the, on the ice, if the ice melts, we all know you can't swim. <laughs> so. You know what? Drum roll, you're, then I just look at the camera. But how about this? You're right about that? Yeah. But I can still surf, so serve it. Serve it, motherfucker. Come on, All right, it. this ain't bad boys. Serve three. it! Where, where, where the attitude, where'd this spunk come from? All right, you want some of this? <laughs> don't worry, we have a bucket right here, we don't have to get it. Watch, hit another one to me. All right, so you finally get on stage, you have that, that moment where you realize this is what you want to do. Yeah. So like, what's the element of a good joke? I'm still figuring it out, to be honest with you. You know, I, cause my early stuff was very physical and animated. Mm -hmm. and, and I realized after my first hour, like people can't relate to that. That could be anybody saying it. So my second hour was about being Korean and Irish and viewing myself as an American and mm -hmm. how we look at each other about race and, and addressing it, so. Hmm. Cultural differences between like, uh, you know, a household, I, Korean, mom, Irish dad, anything? The older I've gotten, I realized that Korea and Ireland are very similar in terms of uh, two pieces of land that have been oppressed and there's definitely a fighting spirit amongst obviously the Irish with the, you know, even Notre Dame, you look at the insignia, but, but Koreans I think as well. Koreans have, have uh, what is called Han and it's this inner uh, emotion of, of wanting to overcome and, mm. and I think overcome oppression. So I think that that is very well documented in both the country's histories and I think it is something that is in my DNA and, and the backbone of, of my soul because I felt it ever since I was a young kid to, to this moment where I, I think maybe it's, it's just being an underdog. So what was, that, what was it like growing up in Pittsburgh being Korean and Irish? Was it hard to fit in or? Pittsburgh was a great city, I love it. That's why I based the show Sullivan and Son there because I believe it's provided me with the backbone of who I am. A, a huge part of it is Midwestern values, mm -hmm. treating everybody the same, busting chops with your friends mm -hmm. and not letting everybody think they're, they're too good for anything. And that's definitely the, the, the backbone, I think, of the show, especially. And, and I think the city. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh! Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> Did you just hit me in the pelvic region? Well, I think we, it's safe to say I, 
Some, some might have had a difficult time finding it, but I did find her G-spot. I literally nailed her in her clitoris. If you go back and replay that, I definitely got within the region though, right? Did you catch my face? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> I saw your O face. Oh God, that was great. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Sorry guys. I'm so sorry. I'll literally look at you. I'll look at you in the camera and go, I'm sorry about that one. Go right down bad. the barrel. Yeah. Shall we uh, reconvene over here? Shall oh. we move this party over they here? They to your hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, shall we move it to a more comfortable situation? Sure. Let me like... get, let me grab what they what they call in the biz a brewski. Mm -hmm. After a, after a tough match, uh, I'll say kudos. Cheers. You kicked my ass. Like I told ya. It's so weird how one minute we're playing ping pong and then all of a sudden we're just transported on this couch. It's so weird. You just magically appeared. Yeah. Mental. See? You see how I'm getting inside your mind right now? But watch how I freak it right now. This is like a bad back. intro to a Key Sweat song. <laughs> that monologue you, you just know, gave me. What you know about Key Sweat? Uh, uh, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, Key Sweat. Uh, like, can you recall a song? Uh, I recall, listen, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. I recall, because the cool kids in my school liked Key Sweat, we all called in sick one morning to go get the new Keith Sweat album at Ross no, Park didn't. Mall in Pittsburgh, I swear no, to God. Didn't. Yeah. And he's singing about stuff that I have no idea what, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to do with a girl. I'm 16, but I'm like, I'm getting this album and I thought it was cool driving in a Volvo station wagon totally. blasting Keith Sweat in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. It's horrible. Totally. Yeah. I used to love New Edition. Of course. And then my favorite was Belle Biv DeVoe, but then I would go, I would, I love New Edition so much, I got Ralph Tresvent and Johnny Gill's solo no, albums. No, you didn't. I See, swear Ralph, to God. I can't. You need a man with sensitivity. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so you were one of the cool kids in school? No. No? No. no. Well, you were listening to Keith Sweat. Obviously, you're really cool. I wasn't cool. I was just, you know, you, you're Funny? 16. You don't know what, no. Yeah, I, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I, like I was voted class clown and stuff, but just it's just awkward. You're just awkward at 16. Nobody knows. That's why I hate when people are like, oh, I got made fun of in high school, they call me. Well, everybody gets made fun of in mm -hmm. high school. If you have one thing that, that makes you different, that's what, that's your chink in the armor. Everybody's gonna pound you if you get made fun of, you know? Black, Asian, whatever, fat, whatever, you got a gap tooth, they're gonna make fun of anything. You got a limp. Sorry, that's what's gonna come out. Someone call me Big Tooth. When Big I was Tooth. Growing up. Yeah, like. No, this is what you see in like a commercial. Honestly, isn't this like a perfect, like you would be brushing your teeth you and, have, then, you, and then you, just you, do that. You just smile and you just. Did you have a game like this in high school? Hell no, no. I didn't kiss a girl until I was 18. Really? Yeah. Look, Steve Byrne in his <laughs> 20s left a trail of fours and fives heartbroken. Ooh. <laughs> Out of tens? Or yeah, out, out of, of fives? Tens. And you <laughs> can say that about the first seven years of my stand up career. <laughs> What's it like to bomb? What's it like to bomb? Yeah. Well, you've seen it for the last 30 minutes on this, <laughs> on this taping. That's what it's like to bomb. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you this, bombing is, it is literally the feeling you get when you like somebody, really, you have a crush on somebody, and, and, and you know they're gonna be at the bar Friday night, and you go up, or you, you get all do would up, and you, 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 know, you go over to them, and maybe you talk to them for a second, and then you just see that guy that you, maybe you like, turn around, and like, hey, Carrie, and then they just start making out in front of you. That it, just an anvil drop gut, your heart it just wrenched out, and it'll stick with you for a whole day or two until the next time you perform, and hopefully you erase that feeling by having a great set. But comics, younger comics, have always asked me when, when, when am I a comic? You know, when mm -hmm. I kill, when I get these applause breaks, when I'm like, no, you're a real comic when you could go up on stage and feel comfortable bombing mm. and not, 
you know, your hand is just like that. Mm -hmm. You're not shaking at all. You're not taken back by it. And it takes time to develop, but as a comic, you always got to get up on stage. You always got to write. And you just got to be comfortable with bombing because it is part of the business. It's right. going to happen. And I, being a comedian in New York City, especially, I saw the best of the best trying out new jokes that they don't go well. I mean, Johnny Carson, my favorite thing that Johnny Carson did was bomb a monologue joke and then his reaction, twisting it, making a joke out of him bombing, mm -hmm. that's the best part mm -hmm. of The Tonight Show for me. That's that's what I always loved. But uh, bombing wow. is just a facet of, of it. And so that's why I never had a problem with failure. I never had a problem with approaching any girl because mm -hmm. I'm like, on a nightly basis, literally six times a night in New York City, I would, I would fail. Mm. So if I saw a girl on the street that I thought was cute, I'd go up to her and, hey, you wanna hang out? You wanna, I'm doing a show tonight, you wanna, and if she said no, I'm like, all right, well. Okay. Bye. It's just a Thanks. part of life, so yeah. And I think failure is a, it is a, a, a part of life that should be more embraced because I think only through failure do you, do you really appreciate success. And I think, I think failure ultimately breeds success. Right. Being in this business and making it on your own, regardless of who's got your back, whether it's mm -hmm. an agent, manager, whatever, just like hustling and producing it yourself. Yeah, I mean, look, in this business, and I think in any business or any 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 venture you you choose to uh, pursue, no one's no one is going to give you anything on a silver platter. It's and you know you're in the mm -hmm. same industry. It's it's totally entirely up to you. You gotta you gotta be your best advocate. You gotta be your best agent. You have to be your best manager, because uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, at some point, hopefully, knock on wood for anybody that's trying to do this or anything, it, it, you know, it'll be your face on the on the bus ad. So you gotta make sure that whatever is represented uh, with that bus ad is, is something you're proud of. Speaking of bus ad, uh -huh. how did your show come about? My show came about because well, I've been friends with Vince Vaughn for quite some time and uh, I got to meet him because he did this uh, Wild West comedy show. It's a great documentary on stand-up comedy and then one of the guys got sick during one of the shows mm -hmm. when they were in Vegas and I got a call from Ahmed Ahmed and Ahmed recommended me to do the show to fill in the spot. Mm -hmm. And I went there and had one of those sets, you know, that you're like, oh, thank God that went well. Nice. Especially in front of this guy. Nice, nice, nice. And we just became fast friends after that. Isn't Swingers like your favorite movie? Swingers is one of my favorite movies. I remember getting the VHS copy in college that my friends and I used to put it in before we'd go out drinking on Friday nights. Nice. And I never <laughs> thought in a million years that I'd ever get to call that guy who I thought, and to this day I think is the coolest guy in the world, it, it, my friend. He said to me one day, you should write a vehicle for yourself because in this town, I don't know how soon Hollywood's gonna develop mm -hmm. something that is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the show, Sullivan and Son. I wrote a show, because at the time I was living out of a suitcase as a stand-up comedian, 50 weeks a year, making a living doing it, but I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. Professionally, I was, I was doing great, but personally, I, you know, I, was, I had my friends, but I never saw them. Being a star of your own show, writer, producer, co-creator, you're wearing lots of hats. Mm -hmm. You're going into your second season. Congratulations. Thank you very way. much. Um, what It must have been really crazy the first season, wearing all those hats for the first yeah. time. So what have, what have you learned from then going into your second season? Or well, are you still like, holy I <laughs> still am, to be honest with you, because every day's a blessing. Tripping? Always. But what I love about the show is that it's it's multi-ethnic, mm -hmm. it's multi-generational, and it's hilarious. And I feel it's a true reflection of the America that I know. And that's what makes it's me happy about really it. really unique on television. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Funny. Well, thank you. Had, had you met your wife then? Or were you married then when you started writing this? I or? was dating her at the time. Oh. Yeah. And then we got married. And I got married right when the show came out and got picked up. No way! And so... Time I got, is everything, huh? I got married right when I could have gone out and used that card in L.A. <laughs> and I have regretted it since the day I look you in the... I have regretted it ever since I got a show. I never got to have those years. You can't have it all, you know? You nope. can't have it all. In the Rolodex, just, just <laughs> overweight Applebee's hostesses and Perkins. It was like I had Tiger Woods sloppy seconds. Goddamn shit. This must be tough. Yeah. <laughs> In all seriousness, so I do, I do love my wife. Uh, she is, she is awesome. And I think that at some point, especially you know, in this business, when you when you decide to live the life of a carny, mm -hmm. it is important to have someone by your side. And yes. I think that's more meaningful than going out and 
meeting someone in Vegas and praying to God that 30 days later you didn't get a phone call. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> My so at the end of the interview, we should both part ways like that, but we'll go in a falsetto. Okay. When, when it's done, okay? Babu, do you want a drink? Uh, yes, please. Zachary's <laughs> to the bar. Uh, you want me to make you something? Um, yes. What? I only know one drink. What's that? Uh, it, Jameson and ginger. Ooh. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. Is that is that your speed? Yeah. Do you want a little dash? No, 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 no. Okay, a little dash. These are these are these are what's called kisses. 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 Stop kissing. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in like? Five, ten years. Five, ten years. Where do you want to be? What's next? Um, Aside from the rest of the season. <laughs> well, yeah, the season show. two of Sullivan and Son. I'll tape a new hour special uh, in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll probably end up developing like a cocaine habit. Nice. Uh, I'll probably end up changing my mailing address to Spearmint Rhino in Las Vegas. Nice. I'll leave my wife and child okay. for six or seven years. Mm hmm. I'll spiral. Uh -huh. I'll end up marrying a stripper uh -huh. who has a hip hop album coming out. How old is she? 19. Boom. And then I'll realize she's crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back to my wife, mm -hmm. beg her to take me back. And then I'll end up on The View crying. Cheers to you, Sullivan. You had some pretty scary shit that happened to you recently. Yes. How I got married. Is that what we're talking about? No. Oh. No, I, uh, yeah, I had a, an incident that shut down production on our show for six weeks. But, uh, you know, it is a pending legal matter, mm -hmm. and it was an incident that occurred with a uh, cab driver. And uh, it involved me having my jaw wired shut uh, for six weeks, basically. But uh, Until recently, I mean... Yeah, just recently, but I've been very fortunate. But the weird thing is, when your jaw is wired shut, then you have to go out in public and go out about your daily business, but you, sometimes it's hard to do this, and you talk to people and you say, oh, I'm sorry, my jaw's broken. <laughs> and some people, for, another, for, for a reason or another, speak louder to you. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, my jaw's broken. Oh, I'm sorry, can you? My ears work. Why are you screaming at me? Why are you yelling? <laughs> Which is the weird thing, but it's a humbling experience. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, mm -hmm. you know, so anytime you have your health in jeopardy or whatever, you know. Drink to that. I'm Joy Bryant. I'm Steve Bryant. <laughs> and this is Across the Board, only on the Reserve Channel, only on YouTube. Can I get a what? What? Pharrell Williams here. Hi, I'm Joy Bryant. I'm Eric Ripper. I'm Tom Colicchio. I'm Dr. Frank Lipman. The host of On the Table. The host of Across the Board. Host of Artist Talk. Host of Hooked Up. Host of the show, Be Well Week, Be Well Weekend, on the Reserve Channel. It's only on Reserve. Did you know that you can follow my show on social media sites like Facebook? Follow us on Twitter. If you're a fan of my show, hit the like button. All of the above. Share me with your friends. Treat yourself. You know, check out a new episode of my show, Hooked Up. And if you want to leave comments, feedback, ideas, whatever, love to hear from you. Leave a comment. And if you don't want to miss the show, be sure to subscribe. The one that's like down here, or is it here? Uh, somewhere down here. Thanks for watching the Reserve Channel. Only on YouTube. Throw caution to the wind and ask yourself what rules.